guys and girls, happy new year, and welcome to the first scuba tube of 2018. Oh, I know. Uh, so today's show is going to be a short one, to be honest, um, because basically we're still comatose from Christmas and New Year's. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we're also changing things. Up. Spoilers! Spoiler alert. Um, so yeah, so let's jump straight into the news. So shark lollipops. Uh, so the uh, the Atlantic White Shark Conservation Conservancy. Con I don't know. That's what they call them. Conservancy. Yeah. Con Conservancy. All right. Uh, responded to <laughs> to their third thresher shark incident at the end of the year. Uh, so what was wrong with the shark? I hear you say. Well, it was frozen solid. Frozen solid. So the shark was frozen solid. Yeah, like a shark popsicle. Hence the title. Uh, so, uh, so the 14 foot long male shark was too frozen to attempt a, yeah, a necropsy. Uh, what, going it's into like the a, water. Yeah, like a dissection or an autopsy, but necropsy. I don't know. Necropsy. I don't know, that's what they put in the article. No. Uh, so they had to haul the, short, uh, the shark off the beach uh, and it's now thawing off at Noah HQ. Uh, <laughs> I love the Thor in a, yeah. just in a slab. Yeah, under a sunbed, just warm enough. That reminds me of the scene of the gangster in Goodfellas who died and he was put in a meat truck and it, and it took three days to thaw him out and that's a true story. <laughs> uh, so uh, so once it thawed, uh, they planned to dissect it to, uh, to figure out how it uh, the, the cold affected it badly. Well, yeah, <laughs> it was a bit chilly. Well, it must have been just like such a sudden onset of coldness that it just couldn't swim. South. Yeah, I mean, as I say, like like you said at the, uh, the, the beginning of the article, this is their third shark yeah. they've had to thaw out, and it's, and it's like the third frozen. male as well. Yeah, yeah. So the females sense it. The, the males, males are just too dumb. <laughs> just cold. Too, yeah. <laughs> oh, try and put a scarf on. Uh, oh, so, the, so the weird thing about this is that they're uh, they're freezing in what should be rather warm waters off uh, sort of Cape Cod. Yeah. So um, yeah. Natural weather. Global warming. Global warming. Global, warming. Global colding. <laughs> Global chilling. Right. It's just a weird thing. Like the picture, you're seeing a frozen shark, literally a frozen, frozen solid. shark, yeah. frozen solid. Anyway, I've got the very serious story. Yeah. Fish poo farmers. So a couple from Oxford has, have had. Let me put my teeth in there, go first one. They've had a rather good Christmas and New Year because they raised £21,000 their, for their latest project. Uh, with the money, they plan to uh, open up a fish farm on the outskirts of Oxford. So they did this via, was it crowdfunding.com or whatever? Yeah, one of those. One of those things, which is always a bit ropey because you never know what, whether it's legit. Yeah, legit. <coughs> but anyway, so... You know, the farm itself is gonna, you know, they're gonna grow leafy plants such as lettuce, uh, pak chow, and chard. I don't know what either of them are, so lettuces. You're a vegetarian. I, <laughs> hey, I've been a vegetarian for one day. You don't know what pak choy is? It, no, it's a, I'm guessing it's a green leafy thing. Yeah. And chard, isn't that like a, a rip-off version of the chard? Anyway, <laughs> uh, the water that, uh, that's obviously being uh, pumped from the fish tanks which of the fish tanks obviously are containing African tilapia, yeah. tilapia yeah. fish, which obviously can, the water is going to contain the, the basically the fish's poop, which contains lots of lovely nutrients, which yeah. is then going to be fed through to the plants, yep. which then the plants are going to absorb the nutrients, but also at the same time clean the water, and then the water is going to get pumped back into the, the fish tank. So it's recycling the water, uh, it's lowering the carbon yeah. footprint, and also it's eco-friendly, which is a massive plus. <laughs> if you want to find out about the more about the process and obviously the company, just head over to smart-green.uk. Yeah, it's cool. It's the fact that they, they raised more money than they were expecting. Mm. So now they're taking it to another level. They're going to put in like solar panels, yeah, and yeah. Like an entire container and stuff. They're going to try and make themselves as self-sufficient as possible, which is the, the best way of doing it. Aquaponics. Yeah, yeah man. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Uh, okay, fish are now becoming knives, it seems. <laughs> it's definitely weird. Uh, so a new Japanese well, trick. What's weird? There's no weird Wednesday anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, a new Japanese trend is now starting to go viral. Uh, so YouTuber Kiwami used a dried okaka. Okay, yeah, 
Oh, All right. uh, to create a knife. Yeah, so this is a fish, like a tuna, I think. It's cool. Yeah, it's, it, you might say it a bit later, but it said that it's like one of the hardest food stuff. I don't mention that. Do you not? Okay. Uh, so once dried, uh, the fish looks just like a chunk of wood, uh, which he then shapes into what looks like a knife. Um, pops it into the microwave for 60 minutes to harden it. As you yeah, do. Yeah, as you do. Um, and then he finally like sharpens it. Uh, so by the end of the video, a dead fish has become a rather tuneful, Useful, that's meant to say. <laughs> knife. Yeah. Uh, tuneful, kind of tune, tuna, tuneful. Uh, so it's an amazing process to see. Uh, I just wonder if scuba divers starting out using it. But... No, no, get my joke. Get my joke. Keep saying it. I saw it as I was reading. No, it. no. <sighs> if right. we started using it, uh, would it just swim off into the water? <laughs> no. It's a very dead fish, and they. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sean just wrote that rather rubbish joke. Uh, no, so yeah, basically dead fish and it's hardened and they shape it into a knife and it can physically cut through stuff. Yeah. It's so hard. It's Why cool, would... like, <laughs> full resourcefulness. That's yeah. pretty cool. They could farm this fish to create knives. But then you need a knife to turn it into a knife. Well, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> it works. You just need one knife. To make the to first get the ball one, rolling. and then and then just put that one in the bin. Could could the fish cut other fish? Fish section. This is yeah. This is getting way too complicated <laughs> about my, a microwave fish knife thing. <laughs> yeah, the news was pretty thin. Yeah, <laughs> we just got back from the holidays. Uh, so uh, so yeah. So that's it for the news. Uh, over and done with for this week. Yeah. Uh, just let you know that from Tuesday next week, uh, our new show called Daily Scuba News will go live. Uh, in it, myself, Sean and James uh, will be talking about one story that has piqued our interest and give it a bit more detail than we normally do in, uh, in Scuba Tube. So it's going to be a bit more focused on one story instead of just yep, quick little bits. Obviously we do what, six stories normally, a bit of an intro or, or a bit of a promotion for whatever video we've done. Yeah. It's literally like one story, it's going to be around about, hopefully around about three minutes long just based on that one story, depending on obviously what the sources we've got. But yeah, so the show's planning to go live at 7 a.m. on Tuesday, the 9th of January, on our YouTube channel, ready for you to watch when you're having your brekkie, and we'll also go live on Facebook probably later on in the day as well. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, uh, so yeah, that's it for Scuba Tube this week. Uh, we'll leave you with a segment on our latest video, Top 10 Stupid Places to Wear Scuba Gear, which we'll see Sean wearing some Yeah, places. it's been a very controversial one. There is definitely <laughs> way too much more, way too much of me in there. Like, there shouldn't be any anything in, in of me in there. We had a lot of stock images of Sean in a wetsuit <laughs> and we and decided to use as many as we could. <laughs> Sadly in this video. But yeah, so enjoy. Yeah. Thanks for watching guys and safe diving. Bye. Number nine, on a first date. First dates can be nerve wracking at the best of times and you don't want to show off sweat patches on your suit. So neoprene might look to be a good alternative, but trust me, it's not. You'll sweat out of your face and all over your hands, they'll go all clammy. Or is that just me when I'm near a girl?